One man, one mission. To rid the world of chronic anxiety once and for all. The Anxiety Guy, Dennis Simsek, shares his personal transformation from living a life filled with overwhelming worry to becoming a full-fledged positivity machine. A leading authority in generalized anxiety, Dennis gets to the truth of your mental health challenges and sets you on a path to transforming each and every area of your life. Here he is, the one and only, The Anxiety Guy. My friends, hello and welcome to episode number 286. You're listening to the Anxiety Guy podcast, and I am your grateful host, Dennis Simsek. This podcast episode is brought to you by the number one anxiety recovery program available online today at theanxietyguy.com under Inner Circle. 16 weeks to total freedom from anxiety at theanxietyguy.com under Inner Circle. And Warriors, in this podcast episode, I decided, you know what? Let's take a recent Instagram Live that I did, and if you'd like to follow me, head on over to Instagram and follow at The Anxiety Guy. I will do many live sessions as I've done. I wanted to build on that live session where people were quite interested in this idea of the pyramid of beliefs. Now, we're going to go deep today because we need to. And as we go deep, I want you to be patient. I want you to understand that you don't have to understand all of it right now. And I want you to come from a compassionate place towards your own understanding around the pyramid of beliefs. Now, imagine for me, if you will, a pyramid of cans. Yes, that's right, cans. And at the bottom of the pyramid are the most cans. That's the first row. Then we've got the second row of cans. Then we've got the third row of cans. Then we got the fourth row of cans. And finally, we've got the fifth row of cans. This makes up a pyramid or a triangle. Now, I want you to come from an understanding place around this pyramid of beliefs because I'm going to share with you what each and every one of these rows mean. And I want to really dial in on where your focus is going in terms of your healing. Because there are so many people out in the world that feel like they're doing a tremendous amount of self-care, therapy, whatever it may be, but they're not getting much out of it. And the biggest reason why this is, is because you are working at the wrong row. Okay, You are working at a level that is comfortable and allows you to cope with certain things, but it's not getting to the root causes of what you're experiencing, therefore there is no healing. So what I want to do today is I want to, through the pyramid of beliefs, help you to understand what each and every row means, and I want you to look deep within yourself to understand at what level are you taking care of your healing. Now, Let's focus on row number one, the bottom row of this pyramid of beliefs. This is where all the cans are, okay? This is the thickest row. Row one within the pyramid of beliefs signifies trauma and relationship disturbances. Yes. In row one, we're talking about conception to the age of of about seven years of age. And within this time period, we're looking at the original experiences that caused the person to take on unconscious belief systems about themselves and reality. Okay, so we had traumatic experiences and they don't have to be physically traumatic. They can be very much emotionally traumatic, mentally traumatic, You may 
have not even been involved in the trauma, but you witnessed it, that could be traumatic. So anything can be deemed a traumatic experience between conception and the age of about seven. Now, at this initial row, this basically creates the canvas, okay? So there's a canvas, and we have painted, at least our systems have painted, what everything means on that canvas because of these early experiences. And unfortunately, many times we feel like we let our parents down, which is the biggest problem. Because you'll notice a lot of anxiety sufferers today, they tiptoe around the world. They just don't want to let more people down. So they're never expressive. They're always suppressive. They're suppressing everything, ideas, symptoms, emotions, you name it, all in the hopes of not letting more people down. So in row one of the pyramid of beliefs, we have trauma, and relationship disturbances. I need you to understand each and every row. Row two in the pyramid of beliefs, we're talking about faking the true self, okay? Faking the true self. So at this point, as we move forward after those traumatic experiences and those relationship disturbances, we are becoming artificial, okay? We are becoming what society wants us to become. And many times we are in line with the next person here, okay? So this is very much a daily occurrence. You'll see this at school early on in elementary school where all these unique and creative children, okay, are always in the same line, studying the same things, being told the same answers, even dressing the same way. Back in the day, if you dressed differently, you were an outcast, okay? You were put in a group. People made fun of you. If you said the wrong thing, people made fun of you. So in row two, we are faking the true self. We are succumbing to society's pressures around who it wants us to be, rather than moving forward as our true, creative, unique, and divine selves. Row three. Row three is about reoccurring events. Now, these reoccurring events are reoccurring similar to the original row one traumatic events that we experience. So they're similar. They're reoccurring events but they're not as intensely felt as the original experiences, okay? So between conception to seven, there was plenty of overwhelm, okay? There were not so much fighting or fleeing, but there was a lot of freezing, okay? Trauma, freezing. So you had an experience where you were yelled at or you made a mistake or something went wrong. You froze And what happened was the subconscious mind and body basically took on that freezing, okay, and froze that experience within the subconscious mind and body up until now, till adulthood, where you're experiencing certain symptoms because of that suppression, okay? So in row three, we are experiencing similar experiences to those traumas, but not as intensely felt as the original experiences. And many times you'll notice this, right? You'll notice this in people. Some people tend to be very, very lucky. If there was a $100 bill that came from the sky, it would land in their laps. But other people, as they're going about their early adulthood years, seem to run into accident after accident after accident. They can't seem to gain any kind of momentum. They go and move towards their dream job or career and automatically they are let down. So basically, 
These are very similar. These are in line with the traumas that created belief systems. And these belief systems are creating feelings. And the universe is reading the feelings, therefore bringing towards us like experiences. So row three is about reoccurring events. Now row four in the pyramid of beliefs is the automation of fear. The automation of fear. Now here what tends to happen is irrational threats start to set in. Okay, fear becomes the norm over safety. So in row four, we start to believe, we truly consciously and unconsciously believe that there is a threat in everything, especially things that are new, new experiences, things that we've never tried before. Therefore, because we never try them, we never tap into what we're capable of. We never realize how creative we truly can be because we're always looking to prevent things from happening. So in row four, you'll notice that this is kind of the start of health anxiety, generalized anxiety, these anxiety disorders where they really start to supercharge and kickstart because we at a conscious level start to believe what we feel. And remember my friends, Feelings are just feelings. Ideas are just ideas. Beliefs are just beliefs. Emotions are just emotions, right? None of these things are truly who we are, but these came upon us because of row one, traumatic and relationship disturbances. And as long as we can understand the pyramid of beliefs better, we can understand at what row we are working to heal ourselves. So again, in row four, there's an automation of fear, okay? The world is a scary place. We're afraid of getting on a plane, even if the plane is super safe. We're afraid of going to that get-together, that party, okay? Because it's just not who we are, right? And these are opportunities, right? Fear is opportunity. Anxiety is opportunity. Row five. Row five is all about the symptoms. We're talking about the highest row. The symptoms, the mental symptoms, the price we pay because we've been carrying around this emotional baggage for far too long. The emotional symptoms. Our emotions tend to fluctuate between anxiety and misery. Okay, we're paying the price in row five, the symptoms for carrying all of this around and believing it at a conscious and unconscious level for far too long. Physical symptoms that turn into health anxiety disorders. Spiritual numbness, this is a symptom. As soon as someone who's got a very high vibe to them comes around us, we don't know what to do with it, right? We don't know whether to be jealous. We don't know whether to cry. We don't know what to do because we are spiritually numb. And finally, situational symptoms, right? Because in row five, when we experience all these symptoms or these effects because of the root causes, what tends to happen is reality starts to become similar to what we believe at an unconscious level. So yes, we may have this desire to become someone different or to create something. But that desire is like sputtering, okay? Like a car sputtering. There's very little gas to keep this car moving forward. It's just sputtering. There isn't much energy behind it, behind the desire. But there's a tremendous amount of energy coming from the subconscious mind or the inner child mind who believes that the world is in fact a scary place to live in. Let's go over the pyramid of beliefs again, and then I'm going to ask you a very important question at the end. Row one is the initials, the initial trauma and the relationship disturbances. Row two is faking the true self, societal pressures. Row three 
are reoccurring events. Life starts to become what we believe at an unconscious level. Row 4 is the automation of fear. Irrational threats set in and fear overwhelms safety. And row 5 are the effects, the symptoms, mental, emotional, physical, spiritual numbness, and situational symptoms on a daily basis that we deem as being anxiety. Now, warriors, I want to ask you an important question today, okay? At what level are you working at your healing? Are you working at row five and simply focusing on symptoms, okay? Are you trying to solely change the way you think about things and focusing on the mental symptoms, for example? How's that going for you? Are you focusing on the reoccurring events, right? Are you trying to focus your attention on row three, where many times during junior high and high school, you had these experiences, these reoccurring experiences, these events that happen because of your core beliefs? Or are you working at row one? Are you focusing on conception to the age of seven. And many of you know that I put out these sessions based on emotional reframing. Emotional reframing is your ability to safely take that child by the hand and show them a new story over what took place in the past. Emotional reframing can be done in many different ways. And if you're going through the Inner Circle program right now, you will be given those ways. There's also another aspect of taking care of row one. And that is to rebuild your relationships. To grab a chair and to put that chair across you. And to have that one person that you felt like you let down. You let down because you couldn't live up to their expectations. So you put that person across you imaginatively. You use your sense of smell to make it real. And you begin expressing yourself. Expressing yourself rather than suppressing all those ideas about them and what they may have put you through. And at the end, you let them know what direction your life is going because of those experiences how you're going to be stronger because of them. And finally, warriors, we've got emotional reframing, we've got chair coaching, and we've also got the ability to bring that inner child with us every moment of every day. If you're driving, that inner child should be on your lap. As you show that inner child all the safety that's around you, all the beauty that's around you, all the miracles, and you're having internal dialogues with that inner child. Heck, if you want to speak out loud, that's fine as well. And then you're invited to a get-together, and the inner child is creating all these defense mechanisms saying, don't go there, or else this is going to happen. And instead you go, hey, this experience is going to be beautiful because... So warriors, bring your inner child with you all day, every single day. Converse with him or her. Show them that the world is a safe place. And I promise you that you're taking care of row one. Again, we've got three options. We can reframe the past. We can sit our past relationships down in a chair and speak to them directly. And thirdly, we can bring our inner child with us all day, every single day, providing safety over fear. At what level are you working at healing? I hope it's not row five symptoms. I hope it's at row one. Because what tends to happen when you eliminate the bottom row? Everything else on top starts to fall over, including the symptoms. 
but if you continue to work at a symptom level, row 4, 3, 2, and 1 will never change. As you can see, this is very real in our lives right now. I hope this episode spoke to you, my friends, because I need the pyramid of beliefs to truly speak to you. And of course, there's going to be a part of you that says, I don't truly understand yet. And guess what? That's okay. Because you've already set the intention to understand. And you're already on this healing journey with me. And I am determined to move you away from dealing with symptoms, asking for reassurances, distracting yourself from generalities and experiences and situations. I want to focus on more deep work with you so that you can be free because that's what you want. You want to be free. And let me tell you something. In the coming weeks, when you experience that freedom, even if it's for a moment, sit with it, accept it, bring it in, allow yourself to reap the rewards of all the efforts that you're putting in. Don't push it away. Don't think yourself out of it. Enjoy it. That's who you're meant to be. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. Remember that you are more than anxiety. If you have any other questions on the number one anxiety recovery program available online today, head over to theanxietyguide.com under Inner Circle. Bye-bye. Thanks for being an important part of the Anxiety Guy podcast community. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a positive rate and review. If you're searching for further support on your road to recovery from anxiety, head over to anxietyexit.com and take part in the powerful End the Anxiety program based around the CBT model. If you're searching for a more one-on-one -on -one approach, you can sign up now for personal coaching sessions with Dennis via Skype. Remember, you are more than anxiety. See you in the next episode.